Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan and welcome to this year's mid-year book freak out tag. This is my fourth year completing this tag video, which is wild but I really love these tag questions. I feel like it's a really great video for the middle of the year, just to recap all of the reading you've done so far, and then kind of realign on what the goals and plans are for the rest of the year. I will link my three previous versions of this video down below in case you wanna go back and watch Baby Jordan answer these questions, but otherwise, let's just get into it. So the very first question of this tag is the best book that you've read so far this year, which is just a cruel question. I say it every year. I cannot pick one. I refuse to pick one favorite Favorite book of the year until I absolutely have to at the end of the year. So far in 2023, I've read 78 books and I'm gonna pick two favorites so far. Unfortunately, side note, I am in the middle of moving, so I don't have my book collection with me. So I will be editing in book covers and we're gonna make do, but just know that I really wish I had these physical books to be holding and loving. So one of my favorite books that I've read so far this year is Symphony of Secrets by Brendan Slocum. This guy is one of my favorite authors. He writes mystery books that have musical elements to them and Symphony of Secrets specifically also has a historical element within it. And it was just the most compelling story. I love Brendan Slocum's passion for classical music and how he incorporates that into his stories. It was interesting, it was suspenseful. It gave me an appreciation for classical music. So I loved it. And then the other favorite that I wanna mention so far is If I See You Again Tomorrow by Robbie Couch. This is a romantic sci-fi book about these two characters who are stuck in a time loop together. It's also young adult. So between these two favorites, I'm really covering all the genres, multiple age ranges, lots of tropes. So I think it's actually a good indication having these two be my two favorites so far of the year because I love a lot of things, but I really love a Groundhog's Day time loop situation in books. And this book, I just think did it perfectly. There is an LGBTQ romance element within it. So if you like that too, and haven't checked this new release out, I highly recommend it. Question number two is best sequel you've read so far this year. I don't read that many sequels, but I have read a few. Probably my favorite is Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher, which is a sequel to The Fine Print and the second book in the Dreamland Billionaire series. It's not my favorite book of all time. It's not my favorite series of all time, but I did ultimately enjoy this second book well enough. Question number three is favorite reread. And I actually don't think I've reread any books this year, so I don't have an answer. Question number four is a genre you have been loving. So as I already mentioned, I like a lot of genres. So there's nothing really new that I've been trying this year that I haven't tried in years previous, but I do think I have been embracing romance as a genre that I love more so than I have in the past. I used to be, I think a little bit picky about the romances that I would pick up. And now I can appreciate romance for what it is. I can enjoy the light and fluffy ones. I always really love the deep and emotional ones but it's just been fun to more widely pick up that genre and explore all that it has to offer. Question number five is a new release you haven't read yet but want to. So I have actually very recently acquired Yellow Face by RF Kuang, which I am so, so excited to read. I have been wanting to try out RF Kuang's writing because she is just so notorious for her amazing writing skills. However, I don't like fantasy, so I haven't picked up any of her fantasy books, and this one is more of a contemporary from what I hear. I think I'm gonna love it, so I can't wait to dive in. I also really want to get to reading You Don't Have a Shot by Raquel Marie, which is a young adult queer romance, I believe set at like a soccer camp, which sounds so much fun. Question number six is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I do have a video coming very soon where I'll talk about all of my anticipated books coming out in the third quarter of the year, so July, August, September, where I'll have a lot of answers to this question, but probably the one that I'm most excited for that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about is Midnight by Amy McCulloch. This is the author of Breathless, which is a thriller that I personally really enjoyed. It doesn't have the best overall rating, but I thought it was really fun, so I'm excited for her follow-up book, as well as bonus answer, Family Lore by Elizabeth Acevedo. I believe this is her adult debut novel, and I've really enjoyed her young adult books so far. So hoping her adult works for me. Question number five is biggest disappointment. My answer to this one is gonna be weird, but I think it's the Twisted Love series. So I did read the entire first book in this series, and then I actually attempted the third book for a video that I did towards the beginning of the year. This is a romance series that is just not my type of romance. I mentioned I'm trying to be more open-minded and I'm willing to try more things in the romance genre, but this is a bit darker romance. 
a lot smuttier and I just don't enjoy that in romance. That's not to say it's not valid and that other people shouldn't enjoy this series. I was just disappointed to find out that no, I can't do it. That's not the type of romance for me. Question number six is the book that's been the biggest surprise so far this year and I have to say that that's Adrift by Lisa Bordeaux. This is a sci-fi-ish thriller that was released in May. I had a copy of it through NetGalley and I read it early and I had absolutely no expectations about it. Lisa Bordeaux is a debut author. I hadn't heard anybody else read this book. I just saw the synopsis and thought it sounded interesting. So I decided to give it a try and I loved it. It's about a woman who wakes up on a boat in the middle of the water with no memory of who she is or how she got there. It's always fun when you go into a book with no preconceived notions, no bias based on other people's reviews or thoughts that you've seen, and that's what this was. And I was so pleasantly surprised with how it turned out for me, so highly recommend that one and was such a fun and pleasant surprise of a book. Question number seven is a favorite new author, which can be a debut author or new to you. Of course, Lisa Bordeaux would fit into that, but my other answers are Abby Jimenez. I have read three books by her this year and two of them have been five stars, as well as Sadiqa Johnson. I have read both of her two books this year and really, really enjoyed them both. And I'll actually talk more about both of them in future questions. Question number eight is newest fictional crush. So speaking of Abby Jimenez, I think my fictional crush of this year is Jacob from Yours Truly. He's sweet, he's emotional, but he also has a really high stress professional job, which I respect. Within this book, you see him struggle with mental health issues, but he does it in a way that he doesn't try to burden other people with that. He really tries to take care of himself and he's just a great guy and that's a great book. Question number nine is newest favorite character. And for this, I'm gonna say the entire cast of characters in The Jump by Brittany Morris. This is a young adult contemporary book with a little bit of a sci-fi element because it's about this group of teenagers who is on this like cryptology team together and they enter cryptology competitions where they solve riddles, break codes, and essentially hunt for treasure <laughs> or try to win these competitions. And these characters are amazing. They are incredibly diverse and I love how this book features and highlights that diversity and really shows how diversity within individuals can complement each other and bring out strengths within each other when they're seen as strengths, whether it's in a competitive sense or just in a general friendship dynamic sense. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry. For this one, I'm gonna have to say Yellow Wife by Sadiqa Johnson. This is a historical fiction book that has to do with slavery and escaping slavery. It is so, so hard to read. So heavy, heavy content warnings for abuse and a lot of other horrific things that absolutely happened in history and happen on the pages of this book that make it so hard to read. I'm really glad I was able to get through it, but there were multiple moments when I could have choked up. Okay, pardon the interruption, interrupting myself. I am editing this video and just realized I completely forgot to mention this book, which not only did I cry while reading and cry about, but I cried about it on camera and put it in a vlog. I gave it one star, so I don't really want to talk about my feelings about it anymore, but I will link that vlog so you can go watch it if you would like to know more about this book. And uh, yeah, it's definitely the answer to this question. Question number 11 is a book that made you happy. You know, I was scrolling through my Goodreads history and there aren't that many books that have made me happy, which I think is indicative of myself as a reader. I like the emotional hard hitting stories. So I don't pick up a lot of light and fluffy happy books. And sometimes when I do, they fall a little flat. I think my answer to this book has to be Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. Yes, it has a lot of heartwarming moments in it, but also it was my first five-star book of this year and I didn't read it until February. So it made me happy to finally get that five-star feeling after a month of what felt like really mediocre reads up until that point. Question number 12 is the most beautiful book you've received or bought this year. This is again, where I really wish I had my book collection with me. My first answer is I did buy a special edition copy of it Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I actually purchased the UK special edition. There was some sale going on, so I got it for a really cheap price including shipping, which I'm ecstatic about. It has beautiful like reflective elements on the covers. The sides of the pages are really pretty and I'm very excited to get into our new house so I can display this book because it's one of my favorites. My other answer is The Enigma of Room 622 by Joelle Dicker. I believe I got this book for my birthday in January from my friend Gwen. And there's just something about the cover of this book that really compels me. I love looking into the rooms at this hotel. The physical copy of this book has like 
shiny gold on the letters and on accents within the hotel. So it's reflective, it's pretty. I also had a really great reading experience reading this book. I gave it five stars. So now I have that amazing connotation with it. So I just really love looking at the cover of this book. Question number 13 is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? There's a lot of them as there always is. There is a never ending list of books that I want to read, but as of right now when I'm filming, I do have 31 books on my owned TBR, which I would like to get to all of them before the end of the year. I like to cycle out my TBR through the year and not carry that many over into the next year. So some standouts that I've had on my TBR for a while that I wanna to get to soon are Five Survive by Holly Jackson, which is a young adult thriller novel, as well as Runtime by Katherine Ryan Howard, which is an an adult thriller with some meta elements. I just realized I think my numbering is off because I had to insert two questions <laughs> earlier in my list. So my numbering on my paper is off. So probably what I've been saying is wrong. But the last question, I believe number 16 is your favorite book community members. You guys, I have so many people that I love in this community. So the list is long. Let's just go ahead and go to all of the people that I subscribe to. So first of all, people that I am close friends with, I've already mentioned Gwen from Gwendolyn Kensinger. There's also Jessie from Reading with Jess, Lena from Lena's Bookshelf, and Summer from Seasons Readings. Those girls and I have a Marco Polo group chat that we talk in every single day. So they are my absolute besties. Other besties, Kendall from Bookphoria, Jordan from Bookish Gem, Jan from Jan Agaton, Rachel from Happy Go Lovely Sleeves, Danielle from Danielle's Reading Corner, Aspasia from Asparagus is Reading, Emily from Emily Cromwell Designs, who makes bookish like merch bookmarks and stuff, and she does studio vlogs, which are really fun, Kelsey from Essentially Booked, Gabby from Gabby Reads, Sydney from Sydney Page Books, Ashley from Ashley's Little Library, Liv from Liv's Library, Gabby from Gabbing About Books, Elise from A Virgo Rising Reads, Naomi from Naomi's Library, Keisha from A Book Like You, Hope from Hope on the Coast, Beth from Beth's All Booked, Kat from Cat Chats, Taya from Taya's Turning Pages, Sid from Sid Bookworm, Robin from Paperbacks and Planners, Elizabeth from Reading Riley, Keely from Vampire Keely, Lauren from Lauren Love Reads, Caitlin from Pride and Paperback, Elizabeth from Ponytails and Paperbacks, other people that I watch every single video they put out, Rachel from Reads with Rachel, Chandler from Chandler Ainsley, Kayla from Books and Lala, Ashley from Bookish Realm, Mara from Books Like Whoa, Zoe from Zoe Delaney, Kate from Kate's Book Date, Katie from Katie Colson, Noelle from Noelle Gallagher, Jesse from Jesse on YouTube, Christina Monique from The Roomies Digest, Mari from My Name is Maddie Nez, Noelle from Noelle Seven Pages, Zoe from Zoe's All Booked, Nakia from Nakia's Hideaway, Jackie from Jacqueline, Erin from Booked and Busy, Story from Storybook, and definitely more. I love BookTube, but those are who came up on my list just now. So of course I will have all of them linked below. So go check them out and subscribe if you are not already. Last thing that I'm supposed to do is tag people, but this is definitely a tag that anybody can do, everybody should do. There's no gatekeeping here. So if you want to do this video, please do so and tag me so I can watch it. If you don't have a channel, but you still want to answer some of the questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I would love to see your answers and compare some of our thoughts on books and these questions. And other than that, I don't think I have anything else. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.